This is the new Land Rover Defender 90. It's rugged, it's practical. You can pretty much take it anywhere, but it's also posh and quite expensive. You know, in this video, I'm going to tell you all about this car. I'm going to talk you around the exterior, the interior. I'm going to drive it off road. I'm going to take it on road. And of course, I'm going to launch it because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching CarWow. And that's what we do here. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video, as ever, by talking about cash money, the price of the new Defender. So the Defender 90 starts from just under £45,000. There you can save an average of around £1,800 of one through car wow. Now you might be thinking, Matt, you're always telling me about the saving on new cars. I'm not in the market for a new car. However, we now have a new service. If you're selling your car, what you can do is just go on to CarWow, upload some photos of it, and you can put in the details. Then you'll get offers back on your car from our trusted dealers, and you can sell it to whichever one you want to, or none of them. They'll just come along, give you the money, and take your car away. Now, if you want to do that, click on the pop-out banner up there to check out the service. Alternatively, at a later date, you can just simply Google Help Me CarWow, and my team and I'll sort you out. I think one of the main reasons to buy the new Defender 90 isn't because it's capable off-road, it's just due to the design because it's a case of old meets new and it's done so very well. You've got classic Land Rover Defender cues like the flat back, the spare wheel on the back, no kind of like tyre inflation goo in this guy, it's proper! So if you've got a puncture out in the Serengeti you can do something about it. Then there's like the squarey circle thing is for the lights and stuff. Familiar but new, like it. It's here at the side where you really notice the difference between this 90 version of the new Defender and the 110 which I've already reviewed. Obviously it's only got two doors and it's a whole lot shorter, about 44 centimetres shorter and it looks all the better for it. A bit more squat, a bit more stubby, a bit more purposeful. I like the fact you've got these roof lights which help illuminate the cabin and they're a throwback to the old Defender. Blacked out rear windows to make it look cool in the urban jungle. And look, we've got a snorkel as well. It's been really handy when you're cruising through Chelsea, that. One thing I like, these look. 18 inch wheels look good. Who ever thought they would on a modern SUV? Especially as they're steel. These are steel wheels. You can have alloys if you want, but why would you? I never thought I'd like steel wheels so much. At the front, it just looks the same as the 110, which means it's good looking. I like the design. This though, sort of reminds me of a COVID mask. Does it you? Look, this is my impression of the new Land Rover Defender, look. Hello. Wait a minute, what's that fly doing on there? Get off your little bugger. Gone. Here on the inside, things are just as good. The interior design of this car is brilliant. Look at it, love it. You've got this grab handle just built into the dash. You have like exposed bolts there, which just feels rugged. And the materials are nice. The seats are part textile, part leather. They're comfy too. The driving position is raised up. You get a great view forward. Got an electrically controlled steering column with lots of adjustment. Electrically controlled seats as well with lots of adjustment. There's also lots of storage space as well. Look, storage there, tray there for your mobile phone, your cup holders, more storage down here with USB ports. You've also got more storage here, here, there's a glove box of course, big door bins, more storage here. It's great, it's a very, very practical car. I like the fact that they've managed to keep the climate controls out of the infotainment screen. So you can just easily just change it as you're driving along. Speaking of the infotainment screen, it's quite nice, the resolution of it, but the system itself is so-so. However, it does run Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you're just gonna use that. Digital driver's display is nice and clear as well, and you can scroll through different menus, but it is a bit confusing to operate that, so just leave it as is and just get on with it. Overall though, very nice interior. Here in the back of the 90, it's still got plenty of room, even though it's quite a bit shorter than the 110 model. Look, knee room's decent, headroom's decent. It's got a wide enough body so you can carry three in the back at once at a squeeze. There's plenty of foot space and the, the floor is pretty flat as well. I also like this, there's lots of charging points there, there, there. You've also got these little places here where you can actually attach an iPad to and there's more chargers there in the back of the front seats. Pull this down, you've got some cup holders there, and then you can fold this central seat down if you need to carry longer items and still have two rear passengers. You've got cup holders down here, you've got folders there to store stuff in. I like these roof lights that I mentioned earlier, help let light into the back. 
big back windows. Just a shame that they don't actually go down. But really, it's not bad. Oh, and look, this particular car's got the hard wearing mats, which is handy because it's got very dirty feet. Hmm, it's all right. And actually, if you needed to carry one extra person, you can get this car with a jump seat in the front, which is good for a kid. So you could have three people here and three people there. Not bad in a 90 model, really. One of the problems with the Defender 90 is its boot. So the capacity is claimed to be 397 litres, but it doesn't actually look that big. And to stack it with boxes or suitcases is going to be hard because of the way these seats recline. So the shape's a bit frustrating. It does have some useful things such as tie down points, which feel very solid. You've got hooks to hang bags off. You've also got a 12 volt socket. But if you need to carry big items, you're going to fold these seats down, right? So fold them down like that. You've got to make sure that you have the seats in the front far enough forward. Otherwise that happens, you can catch the seat headrests when you're folding them down on the front seats. Just gets on your nerves a bit. More of a problem is this, look. Oh yeah. That's good, isn't it? So if you want to slide things to the front, there's that big ridge getting in the way. And that brings me to five annoying things about this car. The old original Defender used to have these aluminium panels on the top of the wings, which were designed for you to stand on, give you some grip when you're dealing with stuff on your vehicle's roof. These ones are just for show and plasticky, and therefore a little bit sad. I appreciate what Land Rover are trying to do with this fabric load cover because it doesn't take up much space when you remove it. It's quite easy to fit as well. Slot that in there. Slot that in there like that. Slot that in there like that. Ah! I thought that was a spider. I'm such a big wuss. <laughs> then slot that in there like that. I'd be no good in the great outdoors, would I? Anyway, the thing that annoys me is this. Look, it comes loose too easy. You only have to touch it. Like that, you see, you see what I mean? Look at that. It's just like, yeah, I'm a bit jumpy today. I don't know why. Duh. Because this has no rear doors, it's obviously going to be a bit more awkward to get into than the 110 model. But they didn't need. Never mind this. No, don't ask. But they didn't have to make it this difficult. Right, so. Fold that forward. Because the chairs are electric, it doesn't just slide when you do that. You have to press this. And then you just almost die with boredom waiting for it to move to create enough space for you to actually get in. And even then, it's a little bit like going potholing. <coughs> Being smaller than the Defender 110 means this 90 version is 120 kilos lighter. Though it still weighs in at over 2.2 tonnes. What are they building it out of? Lead. And then there's the fact that while you can get an expedition roof rack, on the 90 it can only carry a weight of 118 kilos compared to 168 for the 110 model. Hmm. This side hinge tailgate may look pretty cool, but it can be a bit of a... That was a real insect this time. It can be a real pain to operate at times. Obviously, look, it swings out quite a way and it's heavy, look. So trying to load that in a busy car park is going to be hard. So you're going to always have to nose it in, otherwise, yeah, you, you're going to be stuck. And then there's the fact that the electronic release for the boot is a bit of a fiddle. So if you're a bit exuberant with your opening, look, you can actually confuse it. There, and, and then it doesn't op <laughs> open. <laughs> See? Ah! It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. Check this out. You can get the Defender 90 with a full length fabric sunroof. Say hello to the camera and shadow. I love it. It's an 1800 pound option, but it lets you do full on safari mode. Now, where are those lions? Yes, I might be frightened of fake spiders and stuff like that, but I'll take on the lions. I'll take on the sheep actually. Yeah, look at them run away in fear. Yeah, they know it's dinner time. You can get a special rear view mirror where you can flick a switch and it'll go to a live camera feed from a camera on the roof. Now, why would you want that? Well, if you've loaded the car up to the roof and you can't see out your rear view mirror, you just use that mode and then you can see behind you. See? Unlike the Defender 110, which is only available with air suspension, this 90 comes a standard with coil springs for the entry-level car, 
which is more simplistic, which is perfect if you're going to be going overlanding across Africa because you don't want air suspension going wrong when you're in the wilderness. This particular car I've here is fitted with the air suspension and the benefit of that is that you can really jack the car up higher for when you're off-roading. So in some ways, air suspension can be better than coil springs. It does mean that it can be a little bit high. Look, oh, I'm a bit too far from the ground. Oh, I'm worried. Ah, oh, no worries though. I can actually lower it by pressing a button here. There you see. Look. Oh, my little leggies can now reach the ground. No need to worry. Oh, look at this. What's that noise, you wonder? Looks like this Defender is pleased to see me. This car is packed full of electronic trickery to make it as easy as possible to off-road. So if you press this button here, you can bring up these different programs and it'll set the car up to drive on grass, gravel, snow, mud and ruts, sand, rock crawl, or wading. Incidentally, this car can wade up to a depth of 900 millimeters. Then there's the camera, so you've got really good surround view cameras. Look, you can record the way around the car like that. Whoa, it's like a video game. And then there's off-road cameras. So you select that and then you can see your wheel so you can make sure that you're not going to crunch them on any rocks and then press this button here to go into clear sight mode which somehow lets you see through the bonnet and what's underneath the car so you can really place it when you're traversing tricky terrain. That was very tricky for me to say. Now let's talk about the engines and it's quite simple. You can get it with a 3 litre straight 6 diesel and in the D200, it's got 200 horsepower. In the D250, which is what this car is, it's got 250 horsepower. And in the D300, oh yeah, it's got 300 horsepower. Then there's the petrol versions. So there's a two liter turbocharged four cylinder petrol in the P300, which as you guessed it, has 300 horsepower. Then there's the P400, which is a three liter straight six petrol with 400 horsepower. And then there's the P525, the one that I'm most interested in, with a five liter supercharged V8 with 525 horsepower. All cars get an eight speed automatic gearbox, drives all four wheels, and you have an electronically controlled central and rear differential. And we seem to have attracted some sheep. Yes, sheep. So we're talking about horsepower, not sheep power. Yes, you can complain all you like. No one cares about sheep power, you woolly idiot. One of the great things about this Defender 90 is that it's a stubby little bugger, so it's got some good stats. The approach angle is 37.5 degrees and it can climb up steep slopes. The traction control system is very good. Look at this, just pulling me up steady. Well, I can see the sky. <laughs> no idea where I'm going. Hopefully it's got a good breakover angle. Yes, it has, in fact. 31 degrees, so I shouldn't bottom out here. Please don't bottom out, please. It's done it. How oh, easy does it. And then I've got hill descent control. It'll just take me down the slope. I'll just reduce the speed using that, lift off the brake, and look at this. My feet aren't on the brake. It's just taking me down super slow, and I've got a great departure angle, 40 degrees. So don't need to worry about grinding my arse out when I get off this slope. This is a serious off-road. Anyone who thinks that this new Defender is not as good off-road as the old Defender, click on the pop-out banner up there to check out my video where I put a new Defender against an old Defender through a range of off-road challenges. Actually, do you know what? That was so much fun. I'm gonna do it again. Easy, 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 easy up the slope, come on. Oh, it's like a mountain goat. Oh, oh, I'm slipping. Oh, oh, come on, diffs. Someone diffs are locking. Here we go. Wow, that was really good. Struggling for traction because it was very slippy. But the, the traction control system in this is so good, it just doesn't let it break traction too much. It's very, very clever. Here we go. Hold descent control, coming down the other side, and gently down we come again. Anyway, let's take it on road. In fact, let's launch it. See how quick it is. Let's see what this three litre six cylinder diesel will do 0 to 60. Specialist timing gear up here. I'm just gonna launch it. Three, two, one, bit of brake boost. Oh, there's loads of stuff in here just rattling around. 
took off all right, but then it kind of lacks power once it goes. But still, 0 to 60, 7.52 seconds. That's all right. Now, when you're not launching this car, the engine is pretty good. It's got enough punch and the gearbox does respond well when you put your foot down to get a move on. And it's not too loud. You know, it's a diesel, but because it's a six cylinder, it's not as rattly as the four cylinder units. And generally to just drive around every day, this car is really relaxing. So that air suspension is great over bumps. And even though this 90 is shorter than the 110, it doesn't feel all fidgety and skittish like some short wheelbase cars can do. Yeah, you can easily use this for the school run if that's what you're wondering. And the steering's light. It's a little bit vague and slow, but what do you expect? And you're not gonna hoon this thing down a country road for thrills, because you're not gonna get any but it won't topple over and it's much more precise than the old Defender. It's actually a really well sorted car that's easy to live with. And it's comfy when you do mile after mile because the seats, they're relaxing, there's plenty of room, soft places to rest your arms on, unlike in the original Defender. And it's quiet as well. You do get a bit of wind noise from those big mirrors there, but they do give you great visibility. That's about it. I mean, I want all terrain tires, so they're a bit noisier than normal road tires, but they're not bad. It's well insulated. It is, in fact, a luxury vehicle that you can go hardcore off roading in. Basically, it fulfills both briefs. It's a very well done car, this. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Land Rover Defender? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I think you should just go right ahead and buy the new Land Rover Defender because it looks cool. It's lovely inside. It's great off-road. It's comfy on road. Just do it. I hope you all enjoyed the video as much as these guys did. If you did, give it a like or maybe a... Yeah, like that. Um, let me know what other videos you'd like to see in the comments below. What? We're wrapping up now. It's over. But anyway, listen, if you want to watch some more videos, guys, you can just click on the boxes there. Huh? Or if you're thinking about sending your car, click on that box there to go to CarWow. You can sell it through CarWow. Get you a great price on your old car. No, that's our food over there. Oi, leave that alone. Oi, yeah. Lamb chop.